I want to uh, welcome you all to the today's Resiliency Kit series uh, episode session, uh, which um, the Resiliency Kit came about in order for us uh, Stack Soup Europe to organize a learning space and equip activists and civil society with skills, knowledge, and attitude that is necessary to navigate in our uh, difficult realities uh, as activists, CSOs, professionals when it comes to topics like uh, communicating with different groups, using social media for good causes, countering disinformation, building digital safety and security, media literacy skills, uh, etc. And this is why we are all here today. My name is Slava Melnik. I'm the community manager at TechSoup Europe. And today we will uh, wander off on a journey to learn about the Gen Z, of how to communicate with Gen Z, what tools, the tips and tricks can be useful in our work in uh, communicating with the, with the uh, I would say, the younger generation, but I would say the generation younger than I am. Uh, or some of us here. Uh, and with that, I want to welcome uh, our star for today, Verina Bulatovic, who is uh, currently uh, doing her master's degree in psychology in the University of Sarajevo, um, also with a strong background in the Youth Council of the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, and uh, welcome. Hello, Verina. Good evening. And the floor is yours now. Thank you very much, Slava. Um... Thank you for the kind words. I want to uh, welcome you all tonight uh, uh, in the session with me. And uh, I hope we will have a great time. And I hope you will uh, feel free to ask any questions at the, at the end of this, this session. So let's have a great time tonight. To go right uh, ahead and uh, to see what do we have in store for you today, uh, I'll maybe kick us off with something that has been bothering me as a person uh, born in between, kind of uh, before, just before the Gen Z and being, you know, kind of on defense of different things. And I think what's bugging me is is the Gen Z really that different? Because I sometimes feel that it's being used as an excuse to make um, millennials uh, feel bad. And uh, Verina, what's your experience in that? <laughs> I wouldn't say that. Um, and yeah, you are not supposed to feel bad. Gen Z is considered to be uh, born between 1997 to 2012. So um, as any generation bringing something new to the table, Gen Z brought something new as well, especially keeping in mind digital communication. It's not about making anyone feel bad, uh, but rather recognizing the unique traits uh, and preferences of each generation. So we must understand uh, that Gen Z grew up with smartphones. The first smartphone uh, with internet was released at 2001 and first iPhone in 2007. So um, having just that in mind, that they grew up in different contexts and with different habits uh, than millennials and Generation X should be enough for knowing that uh, it's not a uh, like scheme or something. So, so just by understanding Gen Z's digital upbringing and communication style, organizations can better connect with them on social media and, and beyond. <laughs> okay, so cringe, I love that term. Uh, cringe is a term commonly used by Gen Z when they want to de describe something that feels awkward or uh, embarrassing, especially in the context uh, of content or behavior. So if you are hearing it a lot, it might be because certain uh, aspects of your organization's communication or your communication uh, come across as out of touch or awkward to younger audiences. And uh, you can use it as an opportunity to reassess your uh, communication and ensure it resonates with Gen Z if, uh, if those there are the, your audience. And uh, don't be scared to mess up. Uh, and uh, if you are some uh, organization that mm, are considering whether to post something or not, would it be cringe or not? Um, I think we all make mistakes, um, so 
the trends are changing so fast and something that is cringe today maybe won't be tomorrow. So yeah, don't be too hard on, on yourselves. Um, and communication is like never ending journey of learning. So I would say just to um, be aware of um, something that is cringe or not, maybe is cringe today, but tomorrow won't be. <laughs> maybe it's being cool. cringe will be a trend one day. Yeah, uh, I can agree with Slava, definitely. So what I didn't say at the beginning uh, is that uh, I will speak a lot from the perspective uh, while working uh, at Youth Council of Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina. So that's an umbrella organization that uh, connects youth-led organizations in Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina. So um, from our experiences, uh, Gen Z is heavily present on various social media platforms. Um, mostly on Instagram, TikTok, and uh, YouTube even. And However, it's crucial for, uh, if we are talking about non-governmental organizations, uh, to do some research and understand um, where their specific uh, target audience spends more most of their time. Uh, while short videos uh, are great, uh, Gen Z also engages with other types uh, of content, such as informative graphics, interactive, posts and authentic storytelling. So the key is to tailor your content strategy to the platforms and preferences of your audience. For the Youth Council of Federation, um, we have different audiences. And in order to address all of them appropriately, we need to be on various platforms. So according to uh, Law on Youth of Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, young people uh, are from 15 to 30 years of age. As you can see, uh, that is a huge gap, and we need to acknowledge that and adjust our communication. And that is why we mainly use Instagram, um, Facebook, and TikTok, uh, and we are addressing our young audience using informal language. Um, on the other hand, because we work a lot with government officials, um, we use also uh, Platform X, uh, so the previous t Twitter, and we post a lot on our web, which is the core. Um, yeah, and we use uh, more formal language when we are addressing uh, government officials. Okay, so um, using memes uh, is a great way to engage with Gen Z, uh, but it's crucial to do so in a, I don't know, genuine and thoughtful manner. So stay in the loop with the latest meme trends and uh, grasp their context before including them in your communication. Um, avoid forcing memes into your content uh, and instead integrate them naturally in, in a way that aligns with your organization's uh, mission and values. Um, for example, uh, we in the Youth Council uh, Federation, we don't use uh, memes for now because uh, we don't have that much capacity to sit and think it through. So it's better for us, it's better not to use it than to use it inappropriately. So in that way, we are avoiding being cringe. cringe. <laughs> okay, uh, I have some. Um, I love videos uh, and what I love, because I'm somewhere in between. Uh, I'm also Gen Z, but also millennial. So I can understand both gen generations. Uh, I would say keep it concise. Um, as we said, Gen Z had, has a short attention span. Uh, it's approximately uh, eight seconds. So keep your videos uh, short and impactful. That doesn't mean that uh, your videos <laughs> needs to be eight seconds long, uh, just that you need to catch your attention in that period of time. So focus on deliver delivering your me message efficiently uh, without unnecessary information. That's first. Um, then use um, high quality visuals, animations and graphics to capture Gen Z's attention um, and make your content visually appealing. Um, having a good graphic designer and content creator is never too expensive. So yeah, it can be expensive as 
it should be sometimes, but um, when you have really good graphic designer, uh, it can help you a lot um, when catching uh, Gen Z's attention. And um, maybe for third one, I would say that uh, you should tell stories that really resonate uh, with Gen Z. So keep it real uh, and make sure make sure your stories speak to their values. Um, when you yeah, so when you tell stories, uh, tell them uh, to feel genuine, um, and you'll connect with them on deeper level and inspire them to to get involved with your work as as an, an organization. Um, okay, so I will answer the question from the perspective of Youth Council of Federation of Bosnia. Um, we often uh, evaluate our posts, um, are they good or bad, uh, based on how much interaction we get and how many people it reaches. Uh, so in more detail, did people send it to their friends? Uh, did they save it, like it, comment it? So uh, that's the thing that we do. Uh, but we also have to be very well aware of our algorithms, which I have a feeling uh, change uh, a lot and you can never master them. Um, so, again, don't be too hard on yourselves uh, because it's not just about numbers. Um, sure, views and uh, likes matter. Uh, but what really counts uh, is uh, the impact that you are making. Uh, so are you sparking conversations? Are you getting people to take action? I, I think that's the real measure of success when it comes to engaging Gen Z online. And it can happen th that you motivate one person to maybe, I don't know, sign a petition that you posted, but they didn't engage with your post. They didn't like it. They didn't comment it. And on the other hand, people who did like your post, they didn't sign your petition. So that's, I think, just the one example or other example. Um, we in Youth Council, we organized one event um, where we wanted to test um, the board game that we created with 50 young people. On the post where we are uh, calling them to uh, apply, we didn't see huge numbers, uh, but on applications we did because those people recognized uh, the great work that we did and wanted uh, to be part of it. So even now, after the event, um, we hear young people on different activities mentioning that event. So keep creating content that uh, resonates um, and keep listening to uh, their feedback uh, and keep making a difference, I think. Th that's what I say. Yeah. Uh, they. I really uh, love uh, to be involved in um, social causes. So they uh, wa want to be involved in topics that are uh, social, political, uh, and economic. For example, we have Gen Zers that are involved in climate change, that are involved in uh, women's rights. So those are the topics that can really engage them. Um, what we saw uh, during our work um, on mental health, that topic uh, is really important. And uh, after the COVID, when we had uh, the project on that topic and uh, our online campaign, we saw how much people, young people, are engaging with uh, with the contact about uh, content about um, mental health. So yeah, those um, uh, important. Uh, social topics uh, will uh, really resonate with uh, Gen Z, uh, Gen Z's values. So being involved, uh, being um, including um, diversity and inclusivity. Uh, so I think that uh, those are important things, important values uh, for them. And keeping that in mind while creating activities, uh, if you are an organization. Um, can really help you to get more involved with Gen Zers. Um, so while traditional communication strategies may have worked in the past, um, Gen, Z, Gen Z's unique preferences and behaviors require a tailored approach. So adapting your communication style 
to resonate with Gen Z is essential for effectively engaging them on social media. By embracing new trends, uh, platforms, and content formats, um, you or some NGOs uh, can stay relevant and uh, connect with younger audiences in meaningful ways. Okay, uh, so obviously there are lots of rules and uh, lots of uh, things that we should keep in mind um, when communicating with Gen Z. Uh, but what I will say first is to be open uh, for a change. Um, as I said earlier, um, yeah, my favorite strategy uh, is trials and errors. So we should uh, really try something. And if if it's not working, then we should try again and see uh, what works with young people. Uh, so don't be afraid to try new things. See the reactions of your audience, um, their engagement. Don't be afraid to ask uh, your participants maybe on activities that you organize uh, to give you the feedback uh, about your social uh, media platforms, um, what you should uh, keep, what you should change. Um, in order to get those feedback, maybe you should create an atmosphere that is welcoming uh, for the, that generation, uh, that they feel really heard and uh, that you will uh, really use those advices uh, in your future work. So maybe that's the first. Um, the second, um, they value authenticity. So Gen Z uh, can spot insincerity from a mile away <laughs> and be, uh, be genuine and transparent in your communication and share authentic stories and um, experiences that align with your organization's missions and values and show them that you are committed to making a positive impact. Uh, and also, as I said, diversity and inclusion. Embrace diversity and inclusivity in all aspects of your communication. Um, highlight diverse voices and perspectives within your organization and the communities you serve. So I worked with uh, one local um, uh, community where a youth-led organization uh, has um, content on their social media platforms uh, where they are sharing uh, stories from, uh, they have 16 minorities and they are sharing uh, the stories about those minorities. So they are sharing their tradition uh, and everything. So that's one example, but every uh, NGO should adjust it to their own values and to their own mission of the organization. 